Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was Charles C. Morgan. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and our BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page, as well as the video itself on the BuzzFeed Unsolved network. Bun! Subscribe! Let's go to the first question. Should we start up at Facebook? Facebook? Yeah. Gramtown? Or, or YT? YT? Malaika Tinsahe. For a postmortem, isn't it possible that if he was doing shady stuff with the mob, that the sunglasses did belong to him and he just bought them while he was MIA? I never understood why people say an item can't belong to someone as if new purchases can't be made and not be traced. Anyway, Shane's right, this case is super weird, I understand why it's unsolved, but I don't understand who decided to rule it a suicide. Hashtag Bugara, hashtag Shaniac, when I'm feeling brave enough. Very fun. Uh, Conditional Bugara Shaniac. Yeah. I feel like I brought this up when we were shooting. I don't know if it made it into the episode, but I also uh, took issue with that. I think it's highly possible they wore his sunglasses. Regardless, th th those sunglasses weren't exactly the smoking gun for me when it came to the crime scene. I think the, the $2 bill being pinned to his underwear with a bunch of crazy little writings on it, mm, uh, the gunpowder being on his left hand, there was far more incriminating things that were found at the crime scene other than those spooky, spooky sunglasses. We don't really have hard opinions on this show too much because most of the time the cases are unsolved. You don't really know uh, what theory can or can't be ruled out. Yeah, I we, don't, we don't want to put something on the table and say, that's it, that's what that is. Or that's not it even. But this is one yes. of the few cases where I think I could say that's not it. You can make certain claims quite confidently. Yeah, and I mean, look how confident he is with his popped collar. Put some sunglasses on me and post, yeah, just, please. Just had them drop down. <laughs> oh my god! That's, Let's go over to Graham Town. That's Shane on Fridays. Oh, it's popping my day. Popping my day. This is from Kazo Inc. I haven't watched the new episode, but I know it's going to be a banger. I trust the boys. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Go to Facebook for postmortem. Hi, I'm in Manila, and it's sucky. I have to wake up hella early, 6 a.m on a Saturday to be able to see the ep and make the postmortem deadline. Anyway, the thing that shook me the most in this episode was the thought of having the hot dogga in the main ep. Like why? I could barely stand it in the postmortem. Well, actually I stopped watching postmortem when the hot dogga starts. And I can't even, literally can't even, if it gets into the main episode. Anyway, hashtag Bugara forever, hashtag fuck the hot dogga, hashtag love you Shane, but fuck the hot dogga, hashtag I hope I make the postmortem. You made it. You did it! And uh, look, no one is sadder than me that the hot dog uh, infected the uh, the sanctity of the main episode. You know what's interesting though, is that you oh, yeah, have what's... final say on the final cuts of the episode. Mm, I actually said to cut that out of the notes and they didn't. And they didn't. I think the team turned on me. And yet you didn't, what you didn't you, what protest am I, anymore? What am I gonna hack into the mainframe there and like cut it out myself? You know, it seems like maybe if you didn't want that in the episode, it wouldn't be in the episode. Part of the creative process is uh, teamwork. Yeah. And you know, uh, being a team player. Yeah. Yeah, so for this case. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I'm good, yeah. What is this voice you're doing right now? No, I know what you're saying. <laughs> Let's take it back to Gramtown. I'm gonna guess this is pronounced Stephanie's or Stephanie Nine, mm. if we're going Roman numerals. I don't think it's Roman numerals. For the postmortem, would you rather be brutally murdered or be haunted by a spirit for the rest of your life? I'm, I feel like in- I mean, yeah, haunted by a spirit, yeah. In, in, in most equations where your two options are brutally murdered or X, <laughs> uh, you're gonna go with the other one. Would you rather be brutally murdered or have a kind of shitty roommate? Yeah. yeah, I think I'll go with the shitty roommate. I can handle that. Would you rather be brutally murdered or eat a turd? Yeah, I want to take- S Serve me up a turd. Just, sir, yeah, get, one get turd. that, get that put turd. Put it on a bun. Get the turd ready. Some mustard on it. If it's warm, I can put mm. it down. Not bad. Tube town. Tube town. This comes from Yadonovan. Perhaps they were really clever, made him shoot the gun knowing gunpowder would go onto his hand. Also, as there were no fingerprints, there could have been gloves or his sleeve pulled down to cover his fingers. If not, no suicide, boys. Once again, uh, <laughs> if not, no suicide, boys. Hate to tell you, see you later. Sorry, fellas, no suicide. <laughs> uh, once again, hammering home the point, this is obviously not a suicide. If he shot himself and there's no fingerprints, there would be, you know, be, yeah. he'd have to be having yeah, gloves yeah, on yeah, you yeah. know. 
Yeah. I think clearly this was a crime scene. I think they were literally just trying to make it a wacky crime scene. This is one nutty case. And these I officers were like either lazy or in the pocket of these killers and were like, yeah, suicide. I'm gonna give this the nutty award. Every season I pick the nuttiest case of the season <laughs> and it goes to this one, folks. Those killers were probably on the, hopped on the horn after yeah. the suicide ruling and like, did you see what they ruled it? They ruled it a suicide. Can you believe it? We totally did not intend for what that What a to bunch happen. of suckers. Anyways, uh, happy, happy mistake for us. That uh, must be our cool, lucky Cool, we got to kill someone for free. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go back to Gramtown? You could do whatever you okay. want. Okay. Here's from Servo the Cow. If you guys get waxed, <laughs> can I have Shane's Chino's collection? Yeah, sure. Hope you um, have uh, legs that are eight feet long because uh, I guess you could get them hemmed. Yeah, you can get them hemmed. You can get them hemmed. What do you like? 32, 48? Is that your pants size? 32, 34. 32, 43? Did oh, you get that maxed? I don't have 43 inch legs. Is, it, uh, is that actually, I don't think that's inches, man. I thought it was. I don't think it is. Yeah, it is. Let's go back to Facebook. This comes from Carmen Rodriguez. Yeah, this one is for Ryan. Red or green chili tamales. Got a bet going with my friend. Got a bet going with my twin. Love the new network. Hashtag Shaniacs, hashtag love Bugaras. Uh, you know, I gotta go with the, uh, I think I'll go with green chili, green chili. In my opinion, uh, Faraday is always better. I don't know. I, yeah, I, 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 I like it, it has a better taste. Red kind of just a lot of times has just that fire, but it doesn't have as much taste. I know I'm probably gonna get a lot green's of shit for that Green's got more opinion. character to it. Green does have more character, and oftentimes green chili is accompanied by some uh, delicious cheese inside the tamale, or the tamal, because it's not plural. Twins, creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Moving back to, uh, let's go, let's go back to Grand Town. <laughs> uh, Hannah Sadler. What kind of popcorn is your favorite? Buttery? What metal? the fuck are these Jesus questions plain? that we pick? Thanks for being so amazing. Well, you're gonna, you always pick like the real ones, so I like to make yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my favorite kind of popcorn is butter and salt. That's all it needs. He's a purist. In, in some cases, you don't even need that because popcorn is a beautiful thing. You can have it on it, its own. You don't need to uh, dress popcorn up, make it do a little dance on your mouth. You, you just eat popcorn as it is. Popcorn's Appreciate beautiful. It. Don't ruin it Appreciate by it. covering it with cheese or or caramel or... Don't get me started on caramel corn. Now, Ryan is a bit more uh, harsh on... Funny, funny corn. corn, I hate funny corn. I'm okay with certain kinds of funny corn and that's mostly just cheese. Yeah, by I the way, mind. funny corn is uh, popcorn that has something other than butter and salt on mm -hmm. it. It's when you put it in little funny outfits like cheese. Uh, cheese, I don't mind quite as much, but if I'm, you know, pref preferably, it's always butter and salt. Let's go back to Facebook, because this is a very good question. This comes from Rebecca Fink. For the postmortem, I looked at the accompanying Bible verse, which deals mostly in remembering the Creator before everything in life goes to crap. Don't only, don't only turn to Him when things are bad. Do you think that that verse holds a clue to what Morgan was involved in, or oh, was it more of a veiled threat? I like that. Because, I mean, it's referenced uh, two times. Mm -hmm. She says it over the phone, and it's referenced in the dollar bill, or the two dollar bill. It has it written on there, and it has arrows pointing to the verses on the yeah. numbers. Um, it's just one of the many things in this case that is it feels like almost odd for the sake of being odd. I don't think there's even actually any meaning to it. It just feels like these people uh, watched serial killer movies and were like, what can we do here that'd be really fun? Yeah, I was weird. gonna say, it seems as, as much significance as it could possibly have, it also seems very easy to clip out any Bible verse. They probably just opened a Bible, put it on the wall and just threw darts at it. Mm -hmm. Like whatever it landed on, I was like, all right, those verses, yeah. there we go. If I had to put it on something, I frankly just think it was done to be, to throw the scent off the trail. It, yeah. it was there just for show. Yeah. This comes from YouTube, hashtag postmortem from Xena. Since he was the president of a escrow agency, do you think maybe a company was after him for holding funds or maybe a broker and Morgan tried to bring someone down because I know the mob would, un, it would indefinitely go to any lengths to kill who they were told to kill. But I feel at least one member would have accidentally said something or gotten seen. Um, this guy was into a lot of strange things. I wonder if it was one particular thing that got him killed or if it was the amalgam of all the strange things that he was involved in. All those chickens I, coming home to roost. Yeah, lots of chickens. Roost in time. Roost in time, for sure. Let's just put it at, this guy was into some weird things and sometimes uh, you, you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. Yeah. Ryan, what's coming up this week? This case has perhaps some of the most bizarre twists and turns of any case that we've covered. And I feel like that's something I may say uh, you know, frequently, but it's a very, very wacky tale. Um, and I'm surprised more people don't know about it. Well, you'll know now, you know, next week though. 
because uh, he asked me what's coming up. Yeah, no, yeah. not next week. Friday. Two days from now. Friday. Two days from yeah. now. Uh, it's going to be good. You should watch it. That does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Make sure you send in your questions to the BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Instagram page, or comment on the video directly after you watch this Friday's episode, and maybe you'll be featured on the next postmortem. Um, Subscribe to Bun. Our weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog, a Hot Dog Saga, commissioned by Ryan Bergara, written by me and adored by every single viewer. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my apple taters. The mood is electric. As excited crowds line the walkways of the Onion Station promenade, the lights dim as the speakers blare. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, put your hands together for the most dazzling show in all the galaxy. How dare you start that with the <clears throat> Disneyland cadence? The How dare you? The Station Space Buffet Pasta Parade. Music fills the air as the first, I as can't the first pasta float makes its way down the promenade. I can't Atop the this. float is Weldon Bergerow, dressed to the nines. Ha ha! Hello! Welcome to the weekend, my lovely guests. Stop by the hot tubs. They're free! The next float has a bunch of dancing jalapeno poppers on it. They are the universe's best dance crew. Everyone seems to enjoy them. As they pass, another announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare. Stop it! Stop it, stop Ladies doing this. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare for ultimate relaxation as our JVIPs blast you with those sweet, sweet serenity beams from atop the feel-good float. The feel-good float makes its way down the street. Atop it is our, is our gang of lethargic heroes. Yo, what up, party people? I'm French fries. Life is finite. Enjoy your fleeting existence. Also, why does this parade smell like chili? Ooh, cheer if you like my eyebrows. The crowd does not cheer. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I love them, Papa. D did you hear me cheering? <laughs> hey, who wants a blast of serenity beams, huh? Dr. Gundis blasts the crowd with the pink haze. They feel great. Oh, hey, let me get some of that, Doc. Gundis blasts Maisie with the pink light. Man, this is the best weekend of my life. Suddenly, a rumbling. The whole station shudders. Scattered debris falls from the ceilings. No, what was that? Another rumble. Screams begin to fill the air. From the head of the parade, guests start to flee. Expressions of terror on their faces. The panic starts to spread as the crowd erupts into a full-blown riot. Weldon Bergerow limps into view. He doesn't look great. Run! Run, my JVIPs! What is it, Berger? Something large, extra large, that came from outer space and took a bite out of the station. The audience, the jalapeno poppers, he, he's still chewing. Oh, God, the chewing. But another bite is, it's sure to follow. We're all going to die. Fly, you foods. Weldon coughs and then just straight up dies right there on the promenade. Holy shit, is that burger dead? Whoa, uh Papa, do you think this is the work of the Dark Master? It can only must be. Oh, we're served up on a platter, sitting beloved ducks, a meal for a cosmic monster. Oh, what do we do? We've got to stop him. Oh, now wait a minute. You know what'll help us think? Some more of that serenity light. Here, let me crank it up 10%. Give us a little extra juice to combat these harsh vibes. Gundis blasts everyone with the serenity light. They take a deep breath. The chaos around them continues, but they have found bliss. Ooh, that's top shelf, baby. You know, I've been thinking about cutting my hair shorter. Well, you should, you could for sure pull that off, Maisie. <laughs> wow, I was thinking of getting eyebrow implant. <laughs> what? Garsh, are you okay? Ch just chill out, all right? Gundis, can you blast the boy again? Uh, I don't know, he looks a little ripe. Papa? Yes, my boy? <laughs> Whoa, okay. I think I'm gonna die. Garsh pops like a balloon, and as the smoke clears in his spot, a small hot dog witch freed from her prison inside the peach. What up, turdbags? Sorry that took so long. I was in a pit trap. My boy! My boy! You'll pay for what you've done! Pam looks annoyed. Pam, Pam, kazap! Joblet also explodes. Uh, Pam, what are you doing? What? Those were the bad guys. Why were you, like, chilling with them? Wait, Pam's good now? Why is she little? Semantics. See, hey. see reason, TJ. This is hey. ridiculous. This is hey. not out of hand. What's even happening? Who's the giant <laughs> cocktail wiener? What's happening is the Dark Master is devouring this space station one bite at a time, and if we don't do something ASAP, you're all as dead as those dumbass peaches. So stop frying your brains on that pink junk and get your heads in the game, dingbats! She's right. It's now or never. Time to kill the Dark Master once and for all. But he's enormous.
this? How on earth can simple foodstuffs like us ever stop them? I don't know, but I'd say we've got about 30 seconds to figure it out. Man, you guys really pooped the bed on this one. Ugh, shut up, Pam. The hour of judgment has arrived. Will our heroes prevail in the face of ultimate evil? Find out next time on the Hot Dog Showdown at the Space Buffet. Only on Bun. How has it come to this? Thank you.